So, hello and welcome. Uh, my name is uh, Krzysztof Ożuk. Uh, well, you can call me Chris if you like. Uh, you can uh, find me on at LinkedIn and other social media. And today I'm going to be talking about our uh, adventures with Akia and Headless Approach. Uh, but first, uh, the <coughs> uh, my present my short presentation. I am like a, some sort of developer. Uh, I have a master's degree at philosophy and bachelor at uh, computer science. So I'm like a half nerd, half uh, philosopher. So that makes me a double nerd, actually, and. Uh, some years of experience I have, uh, and uh, currently I hold a position of uh, CTO at Code Sushi. So this is my background for for this, and I obviously love code code reviewing everything. Even if I, uh, if sometimes I even go to the neighboring company and do a code review for them. They don't like it, and I have restraining order for that. But that's <coughs> that's the thing. And uh, okay, I'm going to talk uh, about the headless approach and Akia. So first, I need to explain what the headless approach is and what we what did we. Uh, understand by headless. Then, uh, what was our plan for that? What uh, what was good in our approach? What went wrong? And uh, I'm going to draw some conclusions from that and share it, it with you. Where, we, uh, where was our biggest mistake in uh, this case study? So, uh, Probably, if you are like in the Drupal world, you all uh, all are familiar with the headless approach, uh, like kind of new hot thing in uh, Drupal and WordPress community. Uh, basically, we treat the WordPress or Drupal or any other system. Uh, actually, yesterday I had I heard that uh, Magento uh, is always uh, is also um, the thing that can be um, dealt with uh, in such way. Basically, we treat this uh, system as a RESTful API. Uh, we code the front end in the whatever technology we want. Uh, it can be Angular. It can be, for example, some fancy PHP framework. It, it can, can be like Dying Ruby. Uh, or uh, some Python, anything we, we like. Uh, Drupal, in this case, is uh, something like a content managers management system, but without the front-end part, without the respons re responsibility of uh, rendering front-end. So, uh, this is kind of the general idea of the front end, uh, of, sorry, of the headless approach. And as everything has two sides, uh, pros and cons, so here are the pros of a uh, headless approach. Basically, if we are not 100% like uh, fully um, good at Drupal, we can, uh, or we are not particularly good at given version of Drupal. We can treat uh, Drup this instance as a black box, and this black box has input and output, and it communicates with the outside world uh, with a RESTful API. So this gives us uh, the ability to use anything on the front end. Uh, we do not need to confront, conf conform to the uh, Drupal uh, 
way of doing the front end. We don't need to uh, have the same like class name, class hierarchy, uh, HTML hierarchy uh, for the Drupal. We can do whatever we want. And this can speed up development time if we uh, split the uh, the teams uh, as a backend team working with Drupal, configuring it, writing the modules and stuff like that. And the front end team, which only works with the front end and uh, it, the front end team knows about uh, the RESTful API that they need to communicate with the RESTful API and uh, do some um, do some like fetch some data present it in a certain way and they can be they they don't need to know anything about Drupal and in at the end we can do the same thing in parallel basically I had a uh, small uh, talk presentation about this kind of approach uh, uh, a couple months ago and uh, we we did this uh, in a couple of other projects uh, as well not only with Drupal uh, and it it's very effective basically if we begin the project by uh, determining how the API will work how they how uh, what, what will be the uh, endpoints for the API. This uh, works very well because we can mock the API using like uh, uh, some sort of uh, mock API services and uh, code the front end uh, while the back end is still uh, doing its job. So this, these are the pro uh, pros of the headless approach. Of course, there are also cons and well, basically, <coughs> If we uh, <coughs> if we are going to use Drupal as a uh, in headless approach, we lose all the things that Drupal has developed for the front end development. So we only reduce the Drupal for uh, being a merely content storage, quite powerful content storage, but uh, content storage. Uh, there are no out of the box features uh, present in Drupal, like for example, live edit, uh, previews, and uh, stuff like this. You probably more know about uh, know more about this uh, kind of feature set that is related to the Drupal uh, front end capabilities, and we lose all of them. Uh, we ha we also lose all of the debug tools and <coughs> and uh, all the tool set that is uh, dedicated for the front end development uh, using Drupal. So this can be also confusing, and it can be confusing uh, for the client. Um, maybe uh, not the uh, the customer who is uh, using the site. Because sometimes even the Drupal will be on different domain, different, completely different address. And even if we try to hide it, uh, then there could be a questions like uh, why this feature is not present anymore. I use it once and I really need this feature right now. Um, for example, it, was, it will be a live edit. So this could be confusing for the people who uh, who are using uh, Drupal on a daily basis as a content managers and suddenly they get something that is like half Drupal, half something else. So that's how uh, I view the headless approach. It's also not, uh, not only connected to Drupal, it can be used for any other big systems. And uh, right now I'm going to uh, to briefly talk about the project that we have. Uh, we were working for a big company uh, in the United States. Uh, they have a really big website in uh, around like uh, 2,000 of content uh, items in Drupal, like uh, over 2,000 nodes only in one language version. 
So it's kind of big. Uh, it's written in the uh, Drupal 7. It's in, uh, and also it has very uh, long history of uh, developers who worked on them and each left his mark on the walls in this uh, project. So uh, we got this thing uh, which was big, undocumented. Uh, there were there were a couple of uh, contradicting ideas in this system. Like if you do want to do something, you need to also do this and this. And then if you want to do some uh, the same thing but on the different type of page, you needed to do it completely different. So it's kind of com confusing. Uh, not very well structured and stuff like that. Uh, in the meantime, they uh, they decided we want to move to the Drupal 8, and they want uh, and we like started estimating thing. Uh, in the mean, it was like one year ago. Actually, we did some estimates for this. Uh, it was like a, a very large number. Of hours for uh, moving this to Drupal 8. And then we read an article about uh, headless approach. We re-estimated with uh, headless approach, but we came to the conclusion with the client that maybe first we need to do something small uh, using the headless approach so we can just test whether it's uh, going to be okay in the production. So we got uh, the project which was uh, not really like big project. Uh, it was more like a landing page with a couple of features and the ability to edit those, uh, edit some pages, add, create new one, create the articles, uh, embed some uh, feeds from the social net media. And uh, this was the project that I will be going to talk I will be talking about right now. So we decided to take a Drupal 8 and test it. Uh, we wanted first of all to check whether uh, headless approach is something that we can work with and well, what's more important how it will be behaving in the Akia. Akia is like something that we have no influence on. The client decided, okay, I need this in Acquia and there is no way for you to uh, change the environment, change the platform. Uh, so we decided to, okay, let's do it. Um, we selected for the front end side, we selected Silex and uh, Guzzle and HTTP cache for uh, like the, our, the front our front-end stack and then we proceeded to work on the the thing so as I uh, as I told you before we chose the Silex which is twig for uh, templating and Gazel for API communication Gazel is uh, do you know Gazel some know some don't but this is like very cool library where you can like uh, write a JSON file and from that JSON file it will generate uh, it will like uh, generate whole uh, methods for calling the API. It's really cool and uh, and, and it's really cool. Okay, HTTP cache, it's like Symfony which is like uh, Symfony built-in feature, so it's already in Silex, so we just enable it. And we also did like HTML and CSS. It's obvious, but not really obvious, so I needed to point that out. And on the Drupal side, uh, we obviously installed the Drupal, and uh, we enabled the REST, we played a bit with the REST module in the, in the Drupal 8, and we found out that uh, it's not really meeting our requirements by default. So we needed to write custom module so we can fetch 
all data in as as little calls as we can. <coughs> Basically, in in some pages we went to down from like three or four to one, and for one uh, for rest of the pages uh, it's like two calls per page uh, to the API. And uh, we made some amendments to the Drupal admin, like uh, for example, uh, preview is uh, linking directly to the headless part, so the, the front end uh, part of the headless application, not to the, to, to the Drupal, um, not to the Drupal default uh, mechanism of uh, previewing edited pages. And as a project, it was like all in one repository. We, we did it as, uh, um, we put the front end part in one separate directory. We use HT access to direct all the, uh, all the traffic from, for Drupal to Drupal, all the traffic for front end to front end. And, uh, it was really simple. We tested it, it worked cool. And we were ready to deploy to Acquia. And then something went wrong. Not, not in, uh, at the first deploy, but after a, like, we uh, decided that, okay, it's ready. You can test with the cus customer. And the client, uh, and the customer was like, okay, I need to wait a bit. Uh, so for example, in couple of weeks, we almost forget that the, the project already existed and it was like for review in the in customer. And one time, I got like a frantic uh, call from client that hey hey hey, it's uh, it's not working. It's totally not working. Um, what is not working? He said like the name of the project, and. Uh, Okay, I'm going to, I need, I need, will need to like go and check what's happening. And obviously project was not working and we had no, uh, ability to do anything with that because, uh, Akia is not, uh, giving us any kind of control. They all, you basically in the panel, you can always only restart the server or you can, uh, restart the server. And the problem is that we deployed the same on the same machine, the, like the Acquia was like doing their, their job. They kind of slow people and they uh, configure it in the special way. So uh, by default, when, when you uh, order something in Acquia, they order something in um, uh, some server in Amazon. They make uh, one server per instance. They do their thing, configure it and stuff like this. But the customer already had the quite powerful server, so he went with, okay, I don't need another server, just configure one more uh, instance for me on that server. So basically, if I, uh, if I would press the restart on the server, all the client's website would be down uh, for a couple of minutes, and that's not good. So basically, it was like... Uh, uh, it was like a tough decision we, we made that uh, first we will just write to the client uh, to the sorry uh, to the help center of Akia and uh, what's going on why this is happening because we can uh, we can't find any reason for that uh, there is no obvious things with that and uh, just move the test to after we figure out what's going on. Uh, so, basically, Akia is not, not bad solution. If you are, uh, with, if we are using the standard Drupal, it's all okay. If you are doing by things by the book, it's very okay. But if you are guys are like us who did, who like to experiment a bit, uh, then you will have a hard time with them. Basically, they, uh, first of all, we described them, our architecture, because our ar architecture was like this. Uh, 
server uh, gets the request, uh, front-end uh, part, if it's like a front-end request, it goes through the uh, HD access, goes to the front-end, front-end makes a request to the Drupal, and this is like in the same process, in, in context of the same process, so it run, it's uh, in the beginning of the first process, there is another PHP process which is like uh, executed for Drupal. So, uh, in context how the ACQI is made, uh, we are duplicating the requests uh, to the front-end side. Because we are uh, making the one request which spins two processes of PHP. And we described that uh, support wa was like kind of scratching their heads that what's headless sub what's headless what's why Whoa, why why you even do this why uh, we said like oh you promote this kind of approach and we send them the links to the Acquia like uh, doing headless uh, something with Drupal and Acquia we send them the and they were like, what? <laughs> and uh, this is like the support. So there was like no connection between uh, the, the support part of Acquia with the like the marketing and new ideas guys. And uh, we battled like on emails a uh, couple of times. Uh, and they... Uh, Finally, we tested it on our server. So we just set it up on our server. We load tested it with uh, like the uh, Apache tool for load testing. Uh, it was very good, stable, and something like this. On Acquia, the two users which hit the site uh, uh, at the same time, everything dead. And this is because uh, they have a weird setting and limit of the process number. And when they when they when we discover it, it was like okay, it's like uh, you need to change that. They said we told them we can't. This is the headless approach. And we have to figure something out together. But why do you call from the one application the other? Because it's the headless approach. We talk about this. Mm. Okay, because we have a limit on the number of the process, and you uh, you uh, just uh, exceed that, and this causes the PHP to uh, die. And uh, we need to restart it. You need to f file a ticket. And when it happens, make it like a high priority. And then we will restart it. So that was like one solution. The other solution was like get back to regular Drupal and get off our heads. So after that conversation, they looked kind of like this. Glorious support winners. But we viewed them like this and uh, they really wanted us to help that I will give them credit they were super helpful they even set up a call with me and the client and they explained everything what's going on but they were like suggesting to back off uh, they they help us find the problem but they did not provide us with any solutions and they also did not want it to change anything in their setup for this particular project. So they want, they said, no, we cannot uh, manipulate with our algor algorithms to calculate the number of processes per uh, environment. So this is uh, the time that we needed to draw some conclusions and the conclusions are this 
headless approach is really cool. We had real fun doing the headless approach. We we learned a lot with the Drupal from the side that we wanted. Like uh, get to, to it from the most approachable side and uh, develop some plugins and check everything that we want. And we figured that the headless approach is good, cool, is good, uh, and it can be beneficial. And also, you can have a, multiple other services coming uh, together uh, with like one front end, like one front end to rule them all. Uh, you can even imagine the setup where there is a Drupal, WordPress, I don't know why, but it can be. And Magento uh, and one front end which is managing all the stuff uh, from those uh, servers. But uh, I think that the platform as a service suppliers like Akia, we did not try Pantheon to be honest uh, in this uh, particular setup, but probably maybe if not with uh, this kind of process that we had, uh, the uh, we probably think that there will be some other problems with Pantheon, for example. We, we are not sure, but we support, uh, we think that it will, it is very probable that, uh, maybe not the same, but other problems would be. And this is like the problem with the headless approach. If you need something custom, probably you will need to have, uh, something custom as, uh, development uh, like deployment and environment production environment uh, because um, those platform as a service are good they they know this their stuff they know how to handle Drupal development deployment how to serve Drupal but they don't want to serve it uh, to conform to all the changes that uh, particular developers are making. So be careful with the pass. So PAS and mind the environment. Mind we neglected this at the beginning and that was our pain to suffer because honestly we did not think that uh, Acquia is very something special in regards to like the PHP hosting. So we th thought that Okay, it, it will work. It will work on our server. It works on any kind of PHP. So why the hell not on Acquia? And to be honest, we learned our lesson. And right now we need it. We, if we going to, to be deploying something on uh, platform as a service, uh, like Pantheon Acquia, first we need to consult with them if this kind of setup is possible with their in, within their solution so basically i think that's it and if you have any questions i'm open okay no, thank you uh, why didn't you uh, deploy uh, front end and back end to uh, to separate uh, uh, machines, virtual machines environments. Uh, that one, that one, uh, we suggested that, that we will buy like very, very small, uh, even like a free tire Amazon service for the front end and it will re resolve the problem. But this is not, ac this was not acceptable by the client who was paying like tons, really tons of money for Acquia and they did not want it to have anything else. But yeah, that that would be the solution, the perfect solution. On Acquia to separate uh, machines should help. We we found also uh, the other solution, which was uh, like to use uh, basically uh, you know Acquia, yeah. Okay, they give like dev staging for testing and production. Uh, we did something like this first in like one of our first approach. We uh, deployed the front end for, uh, to production and back end to uh, testing. 
So it was on the two separate uh, environments in, within a, one application. And this solved the problem, but then the client was like, mm, I don't like it. So we went, actually, I really forgot to mention it, but uh, Acquia with, with our like uh, going back and forth, they uh, finally enabled like PHP 7 for that environment and that solved the problem. It like PHP 7 was fast enough to handle all uh, the situation and not to uh, get to the situation where there's like two processes and stuff like that. What was the purpose behind using this middle water with the Silex and uh, to instead of using just on JavaScript framework? Development speed. We were much more uh, familiar and we have much more resources with uh, for uh, uh, for s like people knowing just pure Twig. And uh, we have much more uh, knowledge about the Silex and Symphony than we had on Drupal. And we were not, it was like something that we thought it was uh, good for our uh, purposes. And also, we, uh, we wanted to have a test drive. We have, we wanted to have some small project that would be um, uh, something that we can check whether uh, the headless approach is something that we can go with for the big uh, project, which is rewriting the big site from the uh, 7 to 8. And we resigned from that. We are doing like regular Drupal migration for that. If you would have been able to um, choose a different hosting solution, would you still? And this, this, the decision was yours. Would you still move away from headless? With a big project, uh, no. If if it would like, if it would be like best uh, uh, working well on Acquia, we would not move from the uh, from the headless approach because then uh, the thing is that when the front end developers would be working, there would be very little uh, time for them needed to adjust to Drupal. Uh, quite complicated rules for the front-end development. And uh, we choose something that we can test our ability. So uh, we use Twig. We are Symfony company primarily. Drupal 8 is uh, using Symfony components. So we, it in our head, it was like good idea. Uh, and we wanted to have... Uh, the front end part to be as little dependent on the Drupal expert that we uh, we have on in our team as pos as possible, so the front end can go and be be pro producing uh, new uh, new views uh, without uh, need for waiting for the uh, Drupal expert part, for example. So, is that ans uh, answer for your question? Yes. Thank okay. you. Okay. okay, so, <laughs> uh, so it, uh, it appears that there are no more, more questions for, for me. Uh, so thank you for the opportunity to, uh, share my thoughts about, uh, headless approach, about Drupal, about Acquia, about all the things. And I uh, encourage you to contact me anytime if you have, like, questions later uh, you can find me on the social media uh, and you can always just hit me an email on, on this particular email uh, and I will respond to it and thank you very much for opportunity and what can I say else <laughs>